How has your family been affected by the residential school system? Uh, there's not one part of me that's not affected by the residential school system. So um, I don't know, even know where to begin with the question. <laughs> but what I'll say is, uh, uh, I talk about my grandfather a lot. My grandfather was a survivor. Um, but I have many other elements that are survivors within, within my family, so direct lines that I can draw to residential school. Um, but my grandfather is probably the most vivid one. So my grandfather was a guy that uh, was removed at the age of five and, and then um, you know, experienced residential school. Uh, he experienced uh, not just education, the substandard education that he received, but he also uh, he faced a, a great deal of violence in the schools, physical and sexual. Um, and uh, you know, at the age of 14, he lied to go and fight in World War II. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, he's just about to turn 15. He probably could have went back to school and sort of done his thing, but he, uh, he chose bullets over nuns, which should tell you a little bit about his experience, you know? And uh, that, that for me was pretty indicative of, of most survivors. You know, when I went to across the country, um, my father, of course, was head of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. But when I, when I went across the country, um, the thing I heard from survivors the most was it wasn't the violence that they experienced at the schools that was the most profound impact on them, the, one, the part that they feel even the most regret about. It was the violence that they brought home. It was the violence that they learned at the schools and then brought home. And that's very much my grandfather. My grandfather brought a lot of his experiences, a lot of the trauma that he felt over being removed and brought that home. And he brought that to his family. He brought that particularly to his kids. So um, the, the, you know, we could talk about alcoholism and, and physical abuse. Thankfully, no sexual that I know about. But um, we could talk about that. But you know what the biggest impact? You know what the biggest impact of abuse is? The silence. It's the silence. The silence is the hardest part to deal with. And in my family, silence is a language. <laughs> it's like uh, we don't talk about... We don't talk about those things. My dad still has trouble talking about his father, and understandably so. He saw some pretty rough things in his life. Um, but the silence is the hardest because uh, when we found out about my grandfather's sexual abuse, uh, I defied to read about it in a newspaper because uh, my uncle told my dad, and my dad mentioned it to a crowd of, you know, 500 people. And uh, my dad still hasn't told me. <laughs> he still hasn't told me. I, I read about it in a newspaper. And uh, that's, what, that's what abuse does. Abuse perpetuates silence. And that's the hardest thing about, because you don't know what to do with silence, right? You, so silence can be m read and misread. And silence in many ways is beautiful sometimes, but it's also can be very painful. So I'd say that that is the biggest part that I've picked up in my life, is that uh, I don't like talking about things that make me uncomfortable. And when I'm in emotional situations that are hard for me, I'll often want to run, I'll often want to, uh, uh, I often don't want to deal with it. And uh, that's, that's residential school. That's the silence. That's, the, that's wanting to, to not be present. Um, so that's the, that for me is how things have affected me. Now, as a father now, I'm in the situation where I'm cognizant and I'm aware of those legacies. And how do I stop that from not just affecting my daughter, but also affecting young people that I work with, from my students, from my colleagues, to my partner? How do I do that? It's a battle every single day of my life. Like it, every single day of my life is a battle. And I'm not alone. Indigenous peoples across the country, whether it be silence or whether it be their own experiences of trauma, uh, whether it be their experiences in the child welfare system today. Um, residential schools is, was part of a project of colonialism that was inherently about violence and assimilation. And so, and that's still happening today. Child welfare has removed more children than ever today it's still happening and so indigenous people are carrying that and Canadians carry that too because Canadians are the ones who are uh, you know perpetuating some of the system as well as the ones who experience the outcomes of it many of us are married um, or best friends with or live beside you know everyday Canadians so Canadians carry this this experience as well and this ongoing trauma. So what I would say is that every single one of us um, experience residential school. Every single one of us carry that. And so as a result, every single one of us are going to be a part of the solution. 
And that solution is going to take um, just as long, if not longer, than it took for us to get here, which was 150 years. So.